Over the last 24 hours, there have been a couple of major developments in the crypto space that every single crypto investor needs to be aware of. We've seen major changes in terms of spot Bitcoin ETF inflows and outflows. And this is major news because it's regarding institutions and what they're doing with their money in the crypto space. We've seen a few key things going on with Ethereum ETFs, which aren't great. And we need to talk about Charles Hoskinson, the founder of Cardano, because he came out with some major announcements just the other day that are going to be crucial if you're a Cardano investor. So starting off the overall crypto market, we're seeing that currently the overall crypto market cap is sitting at a $1.6 trillion market cap, and we're in the neutral territory. If you're looking at Bitcoin, it is back above $40,000 per coin, and Ethereum is back above $2,200 per coin. So things are looking pretty much the same in terms of prices for the market. We have seen that Bitcoin has rallied a little bit over the last um, day or so, but if you zoom out and you look on the weekly chart, it's basically in the exact same place that we've talked about, where Bitcoin is at a very key level of right around 41,500. If we see a weekly close below this level, well, then I'm expecting a retest of 37,500. If we are able to stay above this 41,500 level, that key support for Bitcoin, well, then I'm very much expecting us to bounce back and rally higher to around that $45,000 per coin range because we've been trading sideways for weeks now. This is a weekly chart and we've really just been staying in between 41,500 and 45,500. So until I see a, a confirmation, so a weekly close below or above either of these key levels, I'm expecting us to just very much stay in between this trading range. And I do have a few trades open right now where I got in when Bitcoin dropped below $40,000 per coin, but I haven't closed any of those out just yet. Now let's switch gears a bit and talk about what's been going on with Gorilla DeFi, because I've talked about this project in a couple of videos and they've officially had their launch of their pre-sale. And since they've launched just 72 hours ago, they have already seen volumes of over $9 million. This is something that is really unheard of in the crypto space, especially with current market conditions. And the way it actually works right now is if you haven't seen my previous videos on it, I'll link those down below. But Gorilla DeFi is ultimately building the first blockchain based on proof of engagement, which ultimately rewards people for engaging, interacting with social media platform, the platform that they are building and with GodChain. So with this platform, if you haven't already gotten involved in it, their pre-sale is completely unique because they have 0.9% pre-sale staking rewards in the form of God tokens. And you could see that they have this marketplace where one God token is equal to one USDC. And during the pre-sale, you can go ahead and exchange these tokens, sell these tokens at any time if you want, which is unlike any pre-sale I've ever invested in. Most of the time you have to wait months and months for a token to launch before being able to sell. But with Gorilla DeFi and God Chain, you don't have to. So you, all you have to do is click on launch app. It'll bring you to their platform right here. It shows that there's over $9 million USDC in total volume. The treasury volume is right around 3 million USDC. And to get some of these tokens, all you need to do is go ahead, connect your wallet, whether that's MetaMask, Trust Wallet, Coinbase, Wallet Connect, just any one of your wallets, then you have to go ahead and just exchange USDC for GOD tokens. You can see that people are constantly making purchases. You can see 10,000 uh, USDC, 20,000 USDC. You can see all these different purchases that go on for pages and pages. So this is a project that has been doing a lot in a very short period of time, and it's definitely worth checking out because I think a lot of people are interested in the fact that their pre-sale is completely unique and because with staking they offer that 0.9% daily ROI. So I bought some of this recently and I just want to give you an update because the platform has officially launched for the pre-sale. Next thing let's go over is what's going on with Bitcoin and why we have seen it rally a bit more over the last day or so. It has a lot to do with what's going on with GBTC outflows. So over the last few weeks we've seen GBTC have significant significant outflows. And this chart right here shows since the spot Bitcoin ETF was approved, what has gone on with inflows and outflows. So overall, we have seen that there have been $5.53 billion of inflows into um, these spot Bitcoin ETF products. But there's been $4.79 billion of outflows from GBTC. So you can see this blue, light blue on the bottom, that represents GBTC um, and like some major outflows we've been seeing. So you could see that outflows for the last few weeks have been 
trending in the right direction. Let's just say that because we see that on uh, January 22nd, outflows were around $623 million. Then on the 23rd, it was at $512 million. Then on the 24th, it was at $403 million. So ultimately for GBTC, we're seeing things move in the right direction in terms of the outflows are getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So like I said, overall, we've still seen um, more inflows rather than outflows into spot Bitcoin ETF products. But the reason why the market's been dragging down recently is because GBTC is the largest Bitcoin uh, spot ETF. And we had been seeing major outflows from that particular investment product for the last few weeks. A lot of this had to do with FTX. FTX sold a bunch of GBTC. But Still, you have to remember that when we're seeing all these outflows, it wasn't great. A lot of people were a bit fearful. And so we had seen negative pressure on Bitcoin's price. Now let's talk about what's been going on with Ethereum because we had talked about in a previous video how there were seven spot Ethereum ETFs that were set to be approved later this year. And we're already starting to see how now the SEC is delaying these spot Ethereum ETF application decisions. This isn't really what I was expecting. I was expecting that this was going to pass a lot easier. We weren't going to see as many problems because we had already dealt with it with Bitcoin, but that's not the case. We're seeing that now the SEC came out and said that they've delayed an application by Grayscale Investments to convert its Ethereum trust product into an Ethereum trade fund, an ETF. In addition to this, in addition to Grayscale, they also delayed BlackRock's application for an Ethereum uh, spot ETF as well. So we're seeing that things don't look like they're going to go as smoothly as we were expecting for a uh, spot Ethereum ETF. Is this good news? No, this isn't great news. But ultimately, it doesn't seem like it's going to have that big of an impact on the market because we've already seen all the drama with spot Bitcoin ETF. So while this doesn't sound great in the big scheme of things, ultimately, it is next to guaranteed that we are going to see a spot Ethereum ETF approved. It's just going to be a matter of time. The same thing is like with a Bitcoin ETF. We all knew it was going to be approved. It just was a matter of time. It took a little bit longer than we were expecting. So that's just something to keep in mind. Last things we need to go over are going to be with Cardano because Cardano recently came out in a report from Santiment and it showed that Cardano is still the highest um, crypto in terms of development activity. So it says dev activity over a 30-day period. Cardano is still number one ahead of Polkadot, ahead of Kusama, ahead of Optimism, and every other crypto out there, especially even Ethereum, which is a bit surprising. So this shows us that with Cardano, despite everything going on in the market, it is still seeing more activity, more excitement, more development than any other blockchain out there, which is ultimately a bullish sign if you're an investor, because I don't care if the price is going up or down. Long term, what you want to see is people using a blockchain chain, people building on it, people transacting on it. And that's exactly what this metric shows. In addition to this, we've also seen that Charles Hoskinson came out in a recent um, video and he says that he thinks 2024 is going to be a great year for Cardano, particularly because of the transition to the so-called age of Voltaire. So that is the final stage of Cardano's development roadmap. And they talk about it all on the website, but there's a few key pillars as part of this roadmap, uh, as part of um, Voltaire. The first is going to be democratic consent. The second pillar is going to be like institutions, um, like the Cardano Foundation, simplifying blockchain complexity. And the third pillar uh, is going to be on like uh, safeguarding user fundamental rights and just, you know, back end aspects for Cardano's blockchain decision making process and just how it's moving forward. So ultimately, a lot of people are excited about this because it's the fifth and final stage for Cardano development roadmap. And like it's finally here. So whether you like Cardano or not, they've been able to accomplish all these different stages of their roadmap. And now we are finally on the final one. So Charles Hoskinson thinks that we're going to see um, more growth in 2024 compared to previous years because of this. So right now there's a lot of stuff going on in the overall crypto market. I am very bullish on crypto long term. In the short term, like I said, if you're trading, I would just keep an eye out on this weekly chart because if we do see it close below 41,500 on the weekly chart, I'm expecting us to retest this lower level support of around 37,500. But long term, I'm just continuing to add to my spot Bitcoin positions. Um, and this is something that you just need to be aware of if you're a crypto investor.